Hello, so we have very big news about Remnant 2. It will be released on July 25th. So I was right that the game will be released in the middle of the year, the middle of the summer. But I was also right about the other thing that I didn't want to be right, meaning they'll have an early access period. So what is the early access period for Remnant 2? Well, they also did this with Remnant from the Ashes. So early access period for Remnant 2 means you'll play the game earlier if you pre-order it, but only if you get the expensive package this time. So in the, for Remnant from the Ashes, they made the game available for everyone during the weekend if they pre-ordered. During this time, you cannot rate the game on Steam or I guess only on Steam. I don't think other platforms have, have something similar. So it's kind of going around the whole review system and also, I mean, the game is ready to be played on the 20th, 21st, so this is just another marketing tactic, another marketing strategy that I don't really think the game needs, it only makes them look bad. On the other hand, we have a very cool trailer which you look at after I finish speaking about the editions and what should you, or my recommendations for what version you should pick. Okay, so the more important, the most important information is out already. 25 for the plebs, 21 for the for the guys who have too much money. <laughs> Sadly, I have to pre-order the game as well. I mean, not playing the game for four days is a lot of time I have I could have used recording or doing other things for the game. So I'm going to do it. I don't want a lot of moral dilemmas, but I don't recommend anyone do it. So what is in the edition? So the standard edition is pleb edition. Deluxe edition is, you don't get the early access, but you get three sets that you could get from, okay, one of the very, very important thing is that you will be able to get everything from the ultimate edition just by normally playing the game. Only you get it faster by just buying it with real money, because that's what real money does, buys imaginary things. Three armor sets, which remember, armor sets are changed, so this might fool a lot of people, don't buy. The Deluxe Edition. The Deluxe Edition, in my opinion, is the trash edition. Why would you buy for something you could get by normal playing? Yes, you'd save a few hours, but now, keep in mind, armor sets don't give you a set bonus any longer. So, armor is more or less cosmetic. It will only give you some stats that you will not really care about since the game doesn't rely on the armor stats for much of anything. Yeah, it's good for protection, but you cannot upgrade your armor set, so the armor set stays at the same level. You don't get a set bonus from the armor set, so not really worth it. And also the armor still has the same weight, so if you have a heavier armor, you'll, you'll only be able to do the encumbered dodge roll. So again, to me armor seems like it's a very bad thing right now. I mean, it's such a big degrade from the first game, I don't know. Depends on what people think, but I don't like the new armor system. And the ultimate edition will have you 3 days of early access, survival pack plus the DLC bundle. So what does that mean? you will be able to play four days earlier, I mean 21, 22, 23, 24, 20, that's five days, even if they make it sound like it's only three days, that's more or less five days depending on, of course, on time zones and other things. And you also get early access to the Gunslinger archetype, it's not early access, you'll just get the archetype faster, so that means the Gunslinger is not a class you can choose in the beginning of the game, archetype you can choose at the beginning of the game, which means it's supposed to be more powerful and it's supposed to be obtained a lot um, later in the game. So that means you'll have an unfair advantage over the rest of the player because again, unfair advantage is a term we use for multiplayer. And if a game has multiplayer and if people have unfair advantages in the beginning of the game, it's kind of bad, it's very bad. So yeah, that's kind of part of the survival pack. It's not really well defined, but that's one thing you'll be getting as well. So you get the Gunslinger archetype in the beginning of the game. So that's probably, that means it will be overpowered a bit. Well, I guess it's not very clear. This is also for any pre-order. So any pre-order will get the class. So it's not in the bonuses you normally get from the list over here. So everyone will get that, even the plebs. <laughs> the looks edition. Play the game a lot earlier, which the game is ready to be played probably... I don't know, I think people like Admiral Barul play the game maybe on the 15, maybe in a week, I don't know. I think the, all of the streamers and YouTubers will have access to the game much, much faster than that, of course. But the game is almost ready to be played even now. 
survival pack, so it's Mat of Elixir, which, which used to give you HP, but now it's the experience potion. I don't have an opinion of that. On, um, on Remnant from the Ashes, I will keep all of kept all of the starter items because they are one of a kind. So if you buy the any of the versions and you have the survival pack, just keep them. They will be good for memory, good as a collector item almost. Broad root are the healing potions, ammo boxes. Just ammo boxes, scrap, just scrap, you can buy stuff with it. I don't just upgrade stuff, not much for the survival plaque or the armors. But a very, very interesting thing is the free DLCs for Remnant 2. So if you go by the DLC tendencies of the developers, we'll have a DLC that will introduce a lot of quality of life stuff, new items, new skills, new enemies maybe, for a certain planet that is not finished right now. So they'll probably upgrade the planet in one of the DLCs. Probably the second DLC will have a new planet, which will be the big DLC with content. Probably the other DLC will have, I think, I'm not sure, the survival mode. It doesn't say anything about the survival mode. The developer said hardcore mode will be in the game since the launch, but survival mode might be one of the DLC they're preparing for the game. Again, I'm not sure, but probably the DLC will introduce... So one of the DLCs will upgrade the planet, another one will introduce survival mode or other game modes or something similar in those terms, and the other one will introduce a new planet. So that's, that's going to be a lot of content we have in the span of a year. Plus their patches, their balance patches, and also their other patches that might introduce dungeons or stuff like that. Because one of the patches in Remnant from the Ashes was a, a dungeon they didn't have time to finish, Leto, Leto dungeon. I think that was just an regular patch, a regular content patch, I don't know. So yeah, we might have a lot of content, so the game will be very very cool to play for one year at least. Now let's just look at this thing over here. I don't have any words for this, this is just amazing. So you already have seen most of these things, the root, the Yaisha planet. That boss was also in Baru's live stream. Yeah, this boss. This is a new enemy, I think this will be... It's hard to say, this looks like a boss, usually don't have enemies to fight that are as tough as this one, it's, it's a knight. It's kind of a skinny little guy, but it's okay, since he has magic powers. And this is the new planet they haven't shown yet. That's a subway by the way, sorry, I'm just going to pause a little bit on some occasions. This is a subway, those are trains. Such a cool image, such a cool game. I love sci-fi sci games, so this is this is exactly what I wanted to see from the game. This is a hyper-advanced civilization of basically alien monsters, but as you can see, they also have a lot of robots. It's not very clear what they do or what they could do, but that's a robot spider with a giant laser, everything you wanted. This is a parasite enemy. It looks like it will eat someone. So hyper-advanced sci-fi civilization with drone stuff, lasers, beams, but also organic stuff. Parasites. This is one of the new features they introduced, which is a very, very active arena type where platforms go up and down. This would be very annoying to fight, probably. But other than that, that, not much else new. Such a cool arena design. And as you can see, this stay like that. So you'll have some cover. And this is straight out of the Matrix. Just look at this. This is the Matrix Evolved. I don't want to think about what they're producing in the pods, but I think they are the smaller aliens we'll see later. Beautiful, just exactly what the game needed, some sci-fi, because I loved the desert planet with its ancient technology and also kind of hints at the capabilities, but this is totally off the scale. So that's a huge parasite looking enemy. And I think this is the black sun they are talking about in Remnant from Gashes. Again, I might be wrong, but they used at least the concept of the black sun and some other things for this planet over here. I might be wrong again, but I don't know. Not many people follow the lore of the game anyway, but I think this is just to kind of tie in the black sun stuff with the game. Still on a moving platform, another train type. <laughs> Jumping. Oh, this will be so annoying if you can die. That's 
a straight up robot enemy. So as you can see we have alien enemies but also robot enemies. Which is exactly what I wanted to see in the Remnant. I'm tired of rats, I'm tired of silly little creatures, I just want to see stuff like this. Of course I don't like the arena being so small, look at that. Those pods are already opened. And these are biological creatures that have this kind of, I don't know, bioengineering to it. It reminds me of Mass Effect more than anything else. And even though those are... Oh, wow. <laughs> That thing looks like it's something from the Akira anime. This is the Hammerhead boss. Hammerhead shark boss. I have no... Not much to say about this. This is amazing. This will be my favorite planet. This will be the planet I play almost, almost the entire time I'm testing and making new builds. This will be amazing. So in a way the game will be great. I just don't like they did this stuff with the pre-order thing and the... You get a new class, I mean you get a class earlier, you don't unlock it, I mean you're basically buying in-game advantages at this point. Yes, everyone will be able to get those things and everyone will be able to play the game, but I don't know, it feels very badly designed in my opinion. And I don't think the developers needed to do this, but they did it anyway. But again, I don't want to be very negative about the game, I'm sure the game will have a lot of problems, I'm sure the game will have a lot of things we will not like, but... Just visually and from a gameplay point of view, this sci-fi alien planet with many interesting creatures is just magnificent in my opinion. The other plants, as, as for the content, remember a lot of the content is recycled from the other games, from Chronos Before the Ashes and Remnant for the Ashes. Chronos Before the Ashes, Remnant After the Ashes. So we have the Chronos world or the Chronos biomes which also, Yaisha is part of that world. Also, you have a lot of Yaisha being recycled over here. Even the enemies are from the game. So, I think the developers basically insisted on having two new planets, which is the Dark Elf planet and the Sci-Fi planet. And the rest of the content will be more or less the same as Remnant from the Ashes. And they will use some of the same models or some of the same mechanics. I don't know. It will be interesting to see. But overall, I think the game uh, is kind of a... It's trying to maintain a very very rough balance between new content and reusing the same content and animations and models. And just trying to be a AAA game. I don't think that... I don't know. I think Remnant 2 will be a great game compared to whatever else comes this year. It might be even game of the year, but at the same time, I just don't like that developers have to pull stunts like this. Why? The game will sell very well. They'll get an epic deal. They'll get a deal with everyone. Developers will get everything they wanted. Why do they need to sell a $70 edition to play the game four days early with the streamers probably playing the game earlier even than that? I don't know. I guess with time will tell, but I will always say these things, even if people are tired of hearing them. Great game. Very bad business model. See you in... 11 days? No. Il one month and 11 days. <laughs> Bye-bye.